Hello everybody. I'm doing a few videos here showing you waxing tiles. I, the camera doesn't have the best angle, so um, I don't want my head chopped off. So I'm uh, doing a few videos, a few close-ups, so you'll get a good idea of what waxing a tile is. Now this is a field tile. Field tile is a, is a plain, flat tile that's used for a backsplash or, or for, on the, for the floor. Um, the professional word is a field tile. So you can also call them backsplash tiles or four tiles. Um, so when you do, when you make these by hand, uh, the traditional method, uh, if you're going to be using glazes, you got to figure out some way not to get the glaze on the back of the tile. Because the glaze, the tile has to sit in the kiln shelf. If you have any glaze on the back of this tile, that glaze is going to stick the tile in the kiln shelf. And uh, not only will it ruin your tile, but it will ruin your kiln shelves. And those kiln shelves are expensive, they're like $50 each. So, uh, any ceramic artist is going to have this material called wax resist. Wax resist is a very common material you buy from ceramic supply companies. It's rather pricey, about $50 for a gallon jug, but you can water it down to your liking and, uh, and uh, learn how to apply it to a glaze to protect any surface from glazes. So we, we're, we need to protect the back of this tile from getting any glaze on it so that when we set it on the kiln shelf after we've glazed it, it's not going to have to stick to the, to the kiln, uh, the shelf in the kiln. So again, this wax resist is how we do that. It is basically, it's basically to wax a field tile, you have to do two things. You have to wax the main surface of the back of the tile, then you gotta, you need to wax halfway up the sides. Now you can choose not to wax halfway up the sides and just wax the back of the tile. There are some glazes that, do, that, you, that you may personally use that you know will not run. However, this, this uh, order that we have here, this glaze is a white glaze and um, it, it, has a, it has a tendency to move a little bit when it's fired. So you need to make sure you um, get the edges. This is actually, someone like me, I've been doing this a while, this isn't very difficult. Um, it takes a little more focus than, than wax in the back. Wax in the back is, you know, very simple, just like this. Now you can use any kind of brush. I prefer to use a brush that's going to allow you to cover as much surface as possible with the width of the bristles, or the, with the width, width of the, um, you know, the bristles or the sponge, just so it doesn't take as long. Um, now, one thing you need to know about the wax resist, probably the second most important thing, aside from wax and actually putting it on your tile, is that anything this this material touches. The glaze or any type of liquid will not stick to it. It's very, very good at doing that. So as I'm waxing the back of this tile, I have to be very conscious of where any excess wax goes. If it drips under my finger, if as I'm waxing the side, my little pinky sticking up and, it, and, it, and my, my brush. Uh, catches it and then I drag it onto the surface of the tile right where the glaze is going to go anywhere that that wax resist comes in, uh, comes in contact with it's going to give it's going to wreak havoc in your in your glazing it's not where it's supposed to be there is no there is not there's no room there's no uh, uh, room to move here you have to make sure you do not get this wax resist anywhere else. Otherwise, it's a pain in the butt, uh, and it's going to cost you a lot of time. So, for instance, always use one hand to hold the tile and one hand to do the waxing. Try not to try to wax the tiles in, in, in batches uh, without ever stopping. Every time you, it, it's almost like the virus, the coronavirus. You get a little bit in your fingers and you brush your pocket and your hand here. You know, if you're doing this, if you're doing a hundred of these tiles over over 
few hours, you're going to have wax and the shirt maybe and in other places. And anytime you stop and touch yourself, just a just a little bit of a of, of a even kind of microscopic levels of wax resist on the surface of the tile will still cause problems in your glazing. The glaze won't be as smooth as if it was completely free of any wax at all. And it's really important when you're glazing a field tile that you have the smooth, the perfect, unblemished glazed surface on this field tile because that's that's you want it to be uniform. Um, unless you're trying to get some kind of interesting look, which not very many customers ask for. So you have to be very careful when you're glazing these sides of this tile not to touch anything with, with the wax resist. And as I'm glazing this, I, I, I can see little droplets blowing off in the wind. If you have your tiles anywhere nearby, there's drips on the table here. Any little droplet that flies off as you're doing this under your tiles that you're going to be working with, it gets this wax resist gets on the surface you're going to be glazing. It's going to be a pain in the butt. Um, Sometimes you have to completely fire the tile again in the, in the bisque firing and burn the wax off in order to, to come back and glaze that tile again. It's, it's, it's that critical. Again, the most difficult part here is, is glazing halfway up. Now, once we glaze this tile, there's, there will still be droplets of glaze left on here because it just can't just v magically vanish. There'll be some. There'll be a little bit of residue left. Um, not very much though. And uh, and you, we will still have to once we glaze these. We still have to go over these with a sponge. Uh, and clean any excess glaze. So the reason why we're waxing halfway up is because it gives us a little bit of uh, it gives us a little bit of uh, what's the word for it? advantage, a little bit of a kind of a head start, you'd say, at the at the cleaning process. You know, if we waxed halfway up this, then, we, then you don't have to worry about the glaze. For half the side. So when we wax it, we want that glaze, when we glaze these tiles, we want that glaze to hang over the edge a little bit, but, but we don't want it to go all the way down to the base of the tile. And uh, like I said, when we glaze this tile, we want the we want the, this is the surface that you're going to be having in your backsplash of your house. When you glaze this tile, you want that glaze to come up, to roll off that edge and, and, and end about halfway down. Now we can, like I was explaining, you can remove all that glaze that's halfway down with the sponge, but it's a lot easier to do this now with the wax resist halfway up. Because then it gives our cleanup job after we glaze, um, it makes the cleanup job a lot easier. By doing this, we don't have to, we don't have to do any sponging. We don't have to do nearly as much sponging. So, you have to be, like I said, still you have to be careful. Um, now, I have really big hands, so, so I have, and I've done a lot of these, so it's... So it's, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, I figured out a way of holding this and I'm just doing this while I'm standing here. Now, if you don't have as big as hand, as big of hands or if you're not as um, agile or don't have the ability or the coordination or whatever you want to call it to um, hold it like this and wax these, you can also do something, you can also get uh, use a, a, a tool called a banding wheel. And a banding wheel is just a, a little tabletop wheel that sits on a stand and you can spin it. And sculpt, uh, artists use that for all different reasons, for sculptures and, and putting, it's called a banding wheel because you spin it to put bands on, to paint circles on, on vessels. So, or you can work on different sides of your object. So you can put this tile right on a banding wheel and spin it and then wax the sides that way. So, uh, 
again, take what I've taught you, and then you can just modify that uh, into your own, into your own, um, uh, your own, you know, into, into your own little procedure, your own waxing production line. Figure out how what works best for you. But this is the basics.